I use the phrase, the more beautiful world our hearts know is possible because our minds think that it's impossible. Because our minds kind of think things are going to be as they've, they've always been. And besides, even if we get a glimpse of the more beautiful world, we don't know how to get there. So the mind's like, yeah, it's not possible, but the heart knows otherwise. So that's why I titled it that way. As for what it looks like specifically, again, I've had experiences that I'm like, yeah, that's part of it. Some things that come to me are, if I put myself in that world and fast forward to a future that might be 600 years from now, most of the time, the loudest sounds that I can hear are the sounds of children playing and birds singing. And I'm totally at ease drinking from any stream that I come across. I'm not so guarded. And any human being feels safe to walk at night, at least feels safe from human beings, to walk at night anywhere, maybe not from lions. But it's so much more than that. It's a world where all of our material possessions are made with mastery. Well, not all, but they are made in a journey to mastery with full heart and care by people in the, in the flower of their creativity. It's a world... See, I hesitate to, to go there because then people are going to think that I'm a New Age airhead. But maybe some of you have kind of visited the world of, of communication with animals and plants and energies of the earth and unseen beings. Even the, the bird listeners who can go into a forest and there are not many forests where, where there are enough birds and, and a coherent enough ecosystem and enough quiet distance from noise pollution to do this. But, but indigenous people could do this. They could hear from the bird songs what was happening miles away. Because if there's some event, some predator, something, some disturbance, that changes the songs of the birds there. And then the birds listening to those songs change their songs. And the ones listening to those change theirs. And so you have what seems like a supernatural ability to know what's going on around you through the songs of the birds, through the pattern of the wind and the leaves, through, the, through, the, through standing knee deep in a, a stream and being so attuned to the, the ebb and sway of the current that, that you know what's happening miles away. Like that, those abilities are part of our um, birthright, really. And, and beyond that, even. So the unfolding of human potential that is possible when it is no longer suppressed and distracted by the, the spectacle that we're offered today is just, it strains belief. And I, I hesitate to actually say what I, what I uh, believe, what I've come into contact with about the future because speaking too much about it does not serve. But imagine like the most amazing experience that you've had, maybe something that, that you couldn't even explain scientifically. My friend had a knee replacement surgery. She's uh, convalescing, going to physical therapy every day and staying at a houseboat. And she looks outside and there's a seagull looking right in the window. And the seagull has one leg. And like the other leg is broken, dangling there, and it's standing on one leg. And it comes every day and is looking right at her. Like that's like a little hint of a wholeness and an 
intimacy that is a possible future. It, there is a through line, a timeline from here and now to a world where that kind of thing is, is the warp and woof of life. Where that kind of thing isn't seen even as extraordinary. Like just as the fact that I can breathe words into the air and you understand them and have an experience. Like that technology is only 40,000 years old. Representational language. Like, but we don't think that that's extraordinary. That is just, just like the, the, the film on the surface of, what's, of what is possible for human beings. So that's why it's really hard to, to describe how beautiful the world could be. Because we don't even have the experiences to, to weave an explanation, to weave a description from. Just these little traces, these little threads, the seagull looking in the window, or whatever experience you've had, that blew your mind. Those are little uh, scintillas of light from the future that are, that are, and you know, it's not even necessarily the future. We all know that there's many possible futures that coexist in a quantum superposition of states. There's not one objective reality out there. That's part of the story of separation. Reality is a conversation. It's an interaction. It's a relationship. So the question then is which of these futures are you coming into relationship with? Which are you aligning to? That experience that you had of deep communion, amazement, and mystery, what does that call you to be? To the extent that we listen to that call, we bring the future from which that experience came into reality. And we establish a path from here to that future. 